I'm back. <laughs> oh, good. You're still there. Okay, yeah. so now we now we officially start. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us uh, joining us so early and uh, for your patience in our tech tech difficulties, which you always have to have. Uh, I would like to introduce you guys to uh, Christos Granquist, uh, serial entrepreneur and uh, and far a farmer and all around uh, just. Uh, all around jack of all trades, let's say. Uh, Christos, why don't you start by telling us a bit about yourself? Yes, hi uh, all. I'm, I'm Christos, as Vivian said. Um, soon to be 40. I live about 30 kilometers west from Helsinki. We, we have built a new home here on old family land and, and taking over. I'll show you a, a view of the fields here. Very nice. And, and some of the guys taking their siesta. <laughs> and up there in the hill, you see the horses. If you can call, if you can call 20, 20 odd degrees a siesta, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're taking their, their nap now between rounds down to the grass field. And, and here's Anneli. One of our oh, res rescue cute. goats. We oh. have our rescue animals here at the farm. <laughs> so yeah, the story is that I worked about 15 years at sea in the Finnish Navy. And, and during that time, we built our new home and, and got the kids. And, and I started getting this live nightmare of having to watch my kids grow via video calls. So uh, I took the opportunity we have here in Finland to become a home dad. And, and you, you get, you know, support for staying at home with your kids when after they're about, well, from, the, from birth until they're three years old. So during that time, uh, I started to develop the digital visibility and marketing for our, our own farm and our own business. And... Uh, that, that led to, to me starting helping our, our neighbors and other local producers in the area with the same thing. And uh, good results led to uh, more requests and, and it became a job. So uh, self-learned digital marketing, web content creator, branding, rural development was the topic. and. Uh, as a very typical Finnish innovation environment, in about 2017, May, I, I had this vision with a beer in my hand in the sauna that we need a tool to develop visibility for local producers because all of these are struggling with either know-how time or money resources and, and don't have the, the skills or the, the resources to, to optimize SEO or, or pay for Google visibility. And, and from that, they, they lose a lot of, of visibility and sales. So I, I de started to develop a, a tool called Prolocalis, which is Latin for go local to provide a, a democratized visibility to all local producers to be easily found. And, and it's not up to how tech savvy you are or uh, how much you, you, you have to pay for marketing, but it, it puts everybody on an even layer and just answers the demand and the requests of the users who, who would like to find the local producers. And, and now we're talking, of course, food and drink, but also uh, handcrafts, arts, tourism experiences, and, and local services. And, and one, one thing led to the other. Uh, that had a lot of traction. And, and soon uh, governmental projects started reaching out for, for us to, to combine our network with, with the different projects. And, and the city of Helsinki reached out that they would like to 
re, re, let, let's say, re, refresh the market culture in Helsinki and, and ask that if, if we could help them with that. And, and uh, for that, we developed a concept of Helsinki farmers markets. So we started arranging once a month uh, a market in, in, on a different, different locations in Helsinki, where in, we in, invited our producers and, and that got a lot of uh, attention and, and thanks from, from the community. And people started asking that, that, why don't we get these products all the time? And uh, that led to us founding the Suomen Pientuottaja Tukku, which is the local producer wholesale or local producer co-op, which, which focuses on events and, and re the retail marketing. And, and, and we have our own web shop and, and uh, store in Helsinki as well, and, and uh, where we only sell the producer stuff. So it's, it's purely we, uh, locally produced and, and only by producers that we know. So, so that's the story, actually, of the whole thing. All right. And uh, I, I remember you also have... Uh a site that's dedicated just to uh, local producers and farmers, the e-commerce, Kotitila Pista Fee. That's correct. Uh, correct. Yes, that's the, the, the store and e com platform for the whole network. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and that and the sales for that, that, uh, that business took off uh, when COVID-19 came along. Uh, correct? That's correct. I mean, uh, Kotitila is, is actually fin Finland's oldest uh, e-com for local food. Uh, it, it was a divorced child since 2016. And uh, meaning, meaning that the founding couple split and it was left on its own. And, and last summer I was contacted by, by the guy who founded it and, and asked me that, hey, would you like to take over and put it as part of your, your local producer co-op? And, and at the point, it was a technical disaster, but, but they, they had a, a, a very good community and a, a wide Facebook reach as well, a good, good newsletter list. So uh, we, we made a deal on that. And, and from the beginning of this year, we, we, we had Kotitila. And our plan was to do, do a, a slow and smart market research-based development but we got smacked with the COVID-19. And, and as you said, uh, sales went through the roof. And, but that, that wasn't like the, the most challenging part of that because the most challenging part was that we had all these producers contacting and coming in from doors and windows to be on board of, of this community and this platform because they lost all their uh, main channels, you know, as, as uh, other wholesale companies stopped buying, restaurants stopped buying, you know. So, so uh, that, was, that was the most challenging, how to manage all, all those contacts we got in, in, in late March, early April. Hmm. All right, and we already have a, a question from the audience here. Uh, uh, we have someone asking how the consumers reacted. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, uh, you know, did they start buying local produce when it was available or when you made it available on, on Kotitila and through your other channels? Did it become popular? Uh, yeah. Uh, there, as I said, there was a good customer base prior to COVID-19, but uh, in April we, we had a 4,000% growth in sales. So, uh, yes, people reacted and, and very rapidly we had to, to do a, a, a fresh version of the platform for, for it to, to take the load and to, to be able to scale. But, I mean, buying and experiencing locally is, is and has been a, a growing trend, but due to covid it, it actually be, became a must and, and, and we went from, you know, nice to have to must have as, as me, me, meat ran out from the normal stores. 
I mean, the, the stores run out of meat. And, and, and at the same time, people started hoarding food. And, and, and the, the stores had a, a two-week delivery uh, time. So, so in, in that sense, there, it was a crisis reaction. And, and now it has, you know, stabilized quite a bit. But, but still, we're, we're doing a lot more than prior to COVID-19. But that's also due to, to the development work we did during the crisis as well. Very nice. It sounds like you adapted uh, really well to the sudden influx in not not just in supply because you had a ton of farmers reach out to you, um, but also to the demand as well as c customers also panicked as well. Uh, so so really nice to see a business that was uh, able to rise to the occasion to it during COVID nineteen, um, and uh, so you know overall. Um, do you I have do you feel like uh, this this work that you're doing has been really um, has been really uh, really helping the 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 f Finnish farming and agricultural community as a whole really uh, or is it only st still just kind of a small you know small piece of the pie? There's lots of work to be done. There is a lot of work to be done. The fact is that it's prior to COVID nineteen. It was. 0.2% uh, of the households in Finland who bought from food from 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 the web or, or from e-com platforms, and during COVID it, it it went up to 4%, and 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 now we have dropped down to about 0.5%. So if you imagine that that 0.5% of all Finnish households buy online food, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, what we have been focusing on is, is actually the storytelling. And uh, that, that has, you, you asked the, the, about the impact on, on the farming community. And, and we, had, we had producers in March reaching out, you know, desperate about the situation as, as everybody stopped buying, you know, when, when the crisis hit. And, and, and I said, take it easy that, that we have our network. We, we, can, we can get your animals, you know, or your products uh, manufactured in the food chain. And, and, and uh, we, we have, have our channels and then we have a, a growing demand. So, so we had a, a few, you know, which, which we actually really, really helped and, and prevented, prevented them from, you know, closing completely and, and or going bankrupt so so those were very touching moments at the point when where where things started you know getting solved for them it must really make the work that you do uh really really inspire and motivate you to continue doing the work that you do when you're able to save those businesses yes and and this is this is a passion of mine you know uh so, so I, I, I get my, my power from somewhere else to work 32 hours per day on, on, on this topic. <laughs> uh, but of course, when, when you see others succeed and, 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 and you know that you have been able to help them, it, it's, it's, it's rewarding, of course, and motivating. Uh, yeah, awesome. Um, <laughs> So in the future, um, you know, because uh, we've talked a lot about the, the, the problems you faced in the past with COVID-19, what do you see happening now in the present and in the future? Uh, I think we've had this discussion privately in the past, like the fear, especially that, uh, you know, that this is just a temporary thing that people are going to go back to, that they're not going to want to buy local after COVID-19. They're just going to go back to normal. Well, pe people tend to forget pretty quickly. Uh, in addition, the market adapts as well, so so the competition has grown a lot, you know, in in, in the food uh, on, online market. Um, but that's obvious that that also a, a big generation change will happen pretty soon in Finland. Let's say within ten years, we will have a a new major generation ruling, which is more tech savvy. And, and that will increase e-com as well. Uh, one thing that is affecting 
the market also is is that uh, people are are more aware and uh, realize the need for a self-supplied food chain or self-sufficient food chain, meaning that people understand that we need to support the Finnish agriculture and the Finnish producer and the ecological farming during the, the, the time of peace and of crisis time as well, to be able to have that at the time of need. Well, good to hear and uh, interesting to hear that you're seeing those trends as well. And uh, in the long term, where would you like to go with 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 uh, your businesses and with your work in general? Where do you see yourself? Uh, actually, two topics. Uh, first of all, we we have major voices in Finland which are saying proudly or explaining proudly about their accomplishments by, by getting Finland to a self-sufficient grade of 80% what it uh, comes to food. So, so Finland is, is 80% self-sufficient when it comes to food. Uh, I think that's crazy. I, I, I think we don't have any reason to be proud of that we we should go to 150 and sell 50 percent of the world's purest food to other places or support famine you know support uh human humanitarian crisis you know with, with with what we could do i mean i think we're we're not producing as much as we could and the reason for that is that we have a certain monopoly here. Uh, we have certain unions and, and, and major companies who run the market and, and uh, give the crumbles to the producers. And it, it, it's just based on generation shifts, you know, that this is how it's always been and this is how we do it. Even though there would be a lot more potential to scale and grow and develop. So, so there, there's definitely a need, need for for a movement to 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 shake up the the food chain in Finland. Uh, and secondly, quite quite relating to this topic as well, uh, as we have these chains monitoring the the food chain in Finland and the, and the market in Finland. Uh, import affects the prices you know as we as as they decide to to buy cheap food uh which don't have a story uh it has no transparency and 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 they put it out on the market and 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 people get used to that price level uh so we, which obviously affects the the profitability of, of, of the work here in, in Finland. So uh, one thing I would like to do is that cut down the amount of import and, and raise raise the amount of, of, of domestic products so it could someday lead to that the farmer's average hour rate, rate which currently is below 5 euros per hour would even be, you know, at the standard level standard minimum level of the country. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty low wage for Finland when uh, when many of the workers make at least uh, probably at least the uh, entry level cashier makes maybe around 10 euros per hour. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge difference. All right. And uh, thank you for sharing your your vision for the future of food in, in Finland and uh, and globally as well. And I have some questions uh, from the audience that they asked earlier. Uh, uh, one of the chefs want to know a little a bit more about Finnish cuisine. They're very curious. I think that's the biggest question I always get. Um, and uh, and uh, they want to know especially about the vegetables that are uh, particular to regional Finland. So if uh, if our, one, any of our guests want to come over, what they, should they keep an eye out for? Well, for that, we have to go back in history quite a bit. Uh, 
what what has shaped Finland because Finland is quite a young country actually and and and, and a nation as its own. Uh, Finland got independent in in 1917, and prior to that we were a part of of uh, the sub uh, the Russia and and uh, before that even a part of Sweden. So the Finnish food culture is is very much related to these. Uh, of course, biological, geographical uh, conditions affect that as the, the the food culture as well. But uh, we're we're very primitive actually when it comes to to the food culture. We don't have too many uh, finesses, you know. Uh, meaning that we, we we have to go back to the days when when we had the the big. Uh, big manners uh who who had their own workers to to whom they provided a piece of land to to grow what they wanted on and 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 pay tax for those at the same time they worked for the the main owner of the land and 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 crops ha- have always been a, a major product in finland uh oat uh is is pretty much the the largest through history, but also rye, because of the weather conditions. Rye is 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 better um, for for to grow in in Finland. Well, back in the days, now we're we're starting to realize that that even though climate change is not affecting Finland so so rapidly, but already summers uh, are uh, more humid. We have a lot more rain than let's say 10, 15 years ago. Uh, winters are warmer. We don't have as much snow as 10, 15 years ago around the coast. Uh, so th- those effects, but then uh, going back to, to the history part of the food culture, along the coasts, it's more influenced by the Swedish history or the Swedish time and and then inland and and on the eastern border it's more affected by by the russian food culture so it's quite a melting pot and and now we have uh the situation where it, it was in in uh, at, at the time of of industrialization uh where the urban areas started started to to pull in a lot of people from the countryside all these brought their food culture into the urban areas. So, so it's quite a, a mixed food culture. And, and, and when it comes to international adaption, uh, it's good that we have a lot of immigrants coming in and, and work as entrepreneurs to bring in their version, versions of the Finnish products, you know, and, um, uh, and, and also the, the chef community opening up, the Finnish chefs go abroad to get ideas to, to, do, to do their versions of the Finnish products. So I think there's cool, there are cool things happening actually now in the Finnish food culture and, and, and people are, are already, you know, proud to say that, that they have some sort of food, regional food culture but what to look for, it depends um, where you go in Finland. Because um, e- e- every county, so to say, has their own national products. And when it comes to, to the vegetables, of course, roots, potatoes, carrots, beetroots are, are the most used. Um, then we have a very strong bread culture due to the oat and the rye. Uh, then we have a, a a strong culture when it comes to, to hunting and game. So there's a lot of, of meat and uh, from uh, moose and, and deer. But that's more on the countryside. You, you kind of need to be a, a part of a...
All right, guys, let's hope Crystal's video comes back soon so he can finish his answer. We'll give it a few minutes. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it looks like uh, it looks like we had still a little bit more technical difficulty, but let's wait. I'm sure Christos will come back. We'll give him a few minutes. Any more questions that you guys have for him? Oh, there he is. Let me try and add him again. We'll get Christos back online. Don't worry, guys. We still have four minutes. Oh, never mind. I think he's he's here. Let's see. Let's hope you can join again. Finish with some last words for us, I hope. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay, I got you there. Okay, let's try again. It's not a, it's not a, there we go. So, hi. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you have one minute left. No, it's okay. I, I'm sure it's not a big deal to go over time. But, uh, anyhow, <laughs> you were saying... Yeah, we were at the point what, what to look for when you come to Finland. Yeah, uh, you were talking about, uh, you were actually talking about moose and deer, and I think this is kind of interesting. Uh, can you maybe also talk a little bit about sustainability? Because I think I was actually talking to my boyfriend this morning about actually how, you know, because we're always talking about how cows are very unsustainable. But, but uh, actually in Finland, uh, the deer and the moose population are very tightly controlled. So if you're eating... Uh, deer and deer meat here, it's it's not going to actually have a negative impact the, the way it does eating cow, per se, I, I believe. But maybe you could clarify on this subject because you probably know more about it. Yeah. Um, regarding that, it's controlled by the insurance companies, actually. <laughs> because uh, if the... If the stock grows too much you know then then we have the roads road road kills affecting insurances quite a bit 
So, so that's why we have a very controlled hunting system regarding moose and deer. Uh, but when it comes to sustainability and, 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 and cows, uh, Finland is, is like the top country when it comes to the sustainability aspect and emissions. And, and uh, already for a, a few years prior to, to the whole climate change discussion started programs regarding that. So uh, we, we have more and more ecological, you know, organic, uh, and, and also more grass-fed. And, and that's becoming uh, a more, you know, valued product in the market. Uh, the problem is that we, we have about 3,000 cow farms in Finland, which are connecting, connected to the dairy industry and 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 they, their interests are completely different when it comes to producing meat uh and that actually affects the market price and the whole market as well as uh these are you know traditional dairy farms which uh of course they have the meat but the meat is just a, a bee product from the dairy industry and therefore the price is much lower than beef cattle and and all beef cattle producers are more uh, committed to uh, organic farming and and uh, sustainable agriculture so there's a, a very tough competition on the market and and and, and the producers are, the, the the beef producers are are a bit sensitive to scale even though uh it would be definitely needed so so we could get more of that on the market and compete with the prices but i guess the the, the toughest thing to fight is, is is what people are used with you know to change the trends and change the demands and just decide that okay that that i ain't gonna buy this this B product, I, I, because when, when I want to eat, I want to know what I eat. I, I want to know that it, it is sustainably grown. And, and uh, I understand the, the value of the product and, and, and the immater, immaterial price in, of the product, you know. So when, when you buy a bag of potatoes, you just, you just don't buy uh, something to fill your belly with. You actually pay for somebody who gets up six in the morning to fill the tractor, to go out on the field, to work the land, to, to, to raise the potatoes and pick them and deliver them so they can feed the people. You know, that's what you pay for actually. And, and, and because of, of, of the trend or, or, or like, let's say that the mass behavior and, and the non-awareness they, they get the five euros per hour for their work. Very, very interesting. Uh, thank you for that insight. Anyhow, we're now running a little bit, a little bit over time, but I think, uh, I think you answered all of the questions and I see no questions from the audience. Uh, but I, of course, one last thing, uh, if people would like to learn more about what you're doing, uh, how can they reach out or connect to you? Uh, either through the, Prolocalis challenge uh, channel, so it's it's uh, prolocalis dot com, uh, which is the portal for for democratizing uh, the visibility for local producers, or the Potitila channel, which is the ecom platform where we do the the re retail for the local produce. Awesome. That Kotitila Pistafi channel is in uh, Finnish, but uh, I guess everyone can just use Google Translate if they need to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, we're currently working on, uh, as a result from a, a hackathon you guys arranged, we, we have a team, uh, team that, that was focused on, on, on uh, content translations. So uh, we're working with them to get uh, automatic string and, and content translations, both for Prolocalis and Kotitila, which to, to help, you know, uh, tourists and, and visitors get the information in, in their own la uh, language. 
and 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 through that spread the information and stories about the Finnish produce as well. Mm. Awesome. So everyone, uh, if uh, if uh, hopefully we'll see you in Finland, but when you do come, please give uh, uh, Kotitila. Uh, uh, or Kotitila and Pro Localis a call. Uh, Pro Localis also accepts international uh, suppliers and vendors. So if you're interested in that, please take a look and uh, and give Christos a call. He'll tell you where to find all the good food. Yeah, and come and visit the store in Helsinki. It's quite an experience because uh, there's 54 producers now in the regular, you know, catalog, and and their their products. And and each jar, each piece of meat, each each bread has its story, and and our guys in the store are are, are glad to tell that story for you. Oh, uh, awesome! So exciting! I hopefully I'll be get, get to come over to Helsinki too and see the store. Thank you so much for your time, Christos. Uh, I will be in touch with you and continue to be doing work with you as always. And if anyone has any more questions for Christos and doesn't know how to reach him on those websites I put in the chat, you can always reach me as well. He's always happy to work with everyone or across the globe. Yeah, right. if interest for a, you know, a panel group discussion, we can arrange that, you know, to have more interactive discussion around the topics as well, so. Just let let me know if you would be interested in that. Of course, you're my go-to guy for expert uh, for expertise on farming in Finland. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and uh, and you guys have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Be good. Bye. Yes. Bye. <laughs>